Hey everyone, my name is Jeff. Welcome back to Jones Works. Today we're going to make this miter saw station that also houses my dust collection system. I hope you guys enjoy this one. Now let's get to the project. Alright, to begin, when I'm working with 2x4s, I like to cut the rounded edges off. I just think it makes for a cleaner look, plus uh, they're one and a half by three when you do it this way, so uh, exactly twice the one edge, and I think it just makes dimensioning a lot easier. Uh, once that's done, we're cutting to size. I'm now cutting the legs and the stretchers for the two main bases. Now after cutting everything to size, I'm gluing the legs together. I'm going for a no fastener look, so just wood glue here, which is plenty strong. Uh, just means you gotta take a little extra time waiting for glue to dry, but that's okay. Uh, I think it just comes out looking a lot cleaner this way. I'm trying to make this match the look of my table saw stand. I'm just trying to make everything match, and I really like this heavy duty shop stand look, so that's what I'm going for. Following the glue up on the legs, here I am gluing up the stretchers for the top platform and the bottom platform. They're the exact same thing, just glue and screws here, and the screws are going to be hidden by the legs here shortly. Now for the uh, plywood platform, I like to recess it. I just think it looks a lot cleaner. And in order to do that, I'm gluing in these uh, cleats, which is just scrap MDF, nothing special. Um, and I'm using a scrap piece of plywood to evenly space them from the top side. Following that, just gluing them to the legs. I'm nailing them on, which I'll cover with uh, wood filler later, but this hides the screws from before. And in order to space the bottom platform uh, evenly, I just rested it on top of a couple scraps of two by fours. Uh, I guess it's just an inch and a half off the ground. Just a closer look at how the legs attach to the stretchers. The two leg pieces form an L and the longer side of the L overlaps these two stretchers seam. This side's shorter and it doesn't need to cross a seam so it goes on the, the full stretcher piece here. Now the bottom platform, the two by fours weren't too bad but for the top platform, uh, the 2x4s were pretty badly warped and twisted, so after gluing it together, I clamped it to my workbench before setting the whole stand on top of it to make sure it was as flat as possible. And to make sure that one didn't pull out of shape before the glue dried, I just I, I threw a couple screws in from the inside, so you'll never see these. After Putting that together, I painted the whole thing and threw on these levelers that I uh, pulled off of an old project. Now this next step is completely unnecessary. It's just, just for aesthetics, but I decided to plane down some cedar pickets and glue them to the plywood boards that I'm gonna be screwing to the inside of these shop stands. Uh, this is just to enclose the shop stands and the cedar is just to dress it up and make it look nice. Eventually I'm thinking I'm gonna put drawers in the one shop stand so these plywood boards will allow me to uh, screw the drawer slides in later. So obviously I made two of these. Uh, now I'm just getting the second one into place and uh, taking the time to level it and it took me way too long to do this. Now we're doing the tops and this was the first one I did and I 
realize a mistake right away. And I'll go over that right now. So as with most of my projects, I kind of make them up as I go along. I am encountering an issue though. I don't think the trim uh, nailed onto the edge of this single sheet or single layer of plywood is gonna be strong enough for the glue. So I'm gonna cut some strips out of this and tack them in here so I have more gluing surface. And I'll do that on the rest of the uh, tabletops as I go along. So learn from my mistake on the first one. I'll uh, implement it on the remaining trim going forward. Easy fix, just ripping some thin strips to tack in and just get that extra gluing surface. I'm mitering these corners because on the uh, inside corners of these tops, I mitered them to accommodate the uh, 45 degree angles that the miter saw makes. And all these strips I'm using are just scraps from the shop. So as you can see here, this one's too short, but I'm just filling it in as I go. After getting all the strips into place, I go back to filling in the trim and just flush cutting it. Um, I think the end cap that you'll see here in a minute, I would have preferred to trap it between these two long pieces, but too late I I already kind of got started but if I were to do it again I would put this one between the other two boards that you see there hope that makes sense anyway but it, it turned out great and I like the look anyway so it's all good now all this trim that I'm using is ash which the only reason I ended up using it was it was the same trim I used on the table saw stand so I wanted it to match after uh, fixing it all into place. I just chamfered all the edges and it was pretty much done. Uh, I threw some shellac as a top coat and it gives plenty of protection in my opinion and I like the looks of it so that's what I went with. Now after the finish dried getting those cedar panels in and now you can see how those turned out. I really like the looks of these and this will be what I mount those drawer sides onto later. All right, guys, I just finished the platform for the miter saw. I didn't really film it because it's pretty simple. It's just a box. The only thing I did was the inner stretchers here are spaced so that the bolts can mount into the two by fours rather than just the three quarter inch plywood top. So I'm gonna let this dry, I just painted it, and then I'm gonna mount it in between the stands. To mount the center platform, I clamped some blocks to the four corners and I, using a tape measure, bumped the blocks up until they got to the measurement I needed and I screwed it into place, so super simple. Last thing for that center platform, uh, just cutting the plywood top now. Uh, just like before, here's a additional strip just for a better glue surface cut a little long so had to cut it shorter there um, and then this piece of trim is beveled as you can see that was just a scrap from another project but it was ash anyway so just wanted to use up what I had you won't see it from the front anyway so no big deal after applying the finish I'm just putting in a dust port for the uh, dust collector just drilling in the four corners and connecting those dots with the jigsaw super easy um, to prevent any large chips from making it to the dust collector I put this little uh, dryer vent thing I found in the gutter aisle at Home Depot I might change that little vent later just in case uh, it clogs up too easily the holes were pretty fine so we'll see how that goes but after that uh, we move on to the uh, hood, which this is just a simple plywood box, and this is to try to make sure we have as much suction behind the saw as possible, and we will also be adding removable doors here shortly. While we're making this though, I'm just going to go over a little uh, design 
detail notes. Uh, as you can probably tell, the shop stands are about six inches away from the wall. Although the tops do go all the way to the wall, that is to allow dust collection hoses behind the shop stand so they don't interfere with drawers or anything like that that will be added later. Uh, just wanted to point that out in case you were wondering why it's so far away from the wall. Now, since I like to do everything twice and not right the first time and make it hard on myself, I did this way out of order and I didn't put the holes for the hoses that go up under here when I made the thing. So I'm going to take this apart and get that taken care of before I go any further. So you could easily just drill the holes large enough so the full hose goes through, but I decided to put flanges so I could uh, disconnect the hoses in different places if I need to, if there's any clogs anywhere. I just, I think it gives you a lot more versatility, so that's why I'm adding these. It does add to the overall cost though, so that's something to be aware of. Super easy to attach them though, I'm just using bolts here, but you could just use screws, whatever you have is fine. All right, next update. After installing the flanges, I had a heck of a time setting up the camera to where you could see anything I was doing other than just a picture of my back. So I just went ahead and installed it and now I'll show you what I did. The top is back on. The two flange ports, one for the table saw, one for the miter saw, is now there. I just need to connect with the flex hose. Underneath, you can see I've got one run going right to the bottom of the miter saw, and then a PVC run down here that will go to the table saw. That way, I don't have a flex hose crossing the tabletop surface. It'll go back down behind and I won't have the hose in my way here which I feel I'll be going back and forth for the most part the run will just be here so I, I won't mind stepping over just one small step as opposed to having to get that out of my way so that's where we're at now the last bit for part one is going to be making the hood which I'll get back to now all right, just cutting a few more strips of ash out of the slab I have. And after that, I'm going to recess some washers into the top strip. That way I can put some magnets on the removable doors and the magnet should hopefully sit flush against this thing and allow the doors to sit flush against the frame of this box so I think that'll make for a clean look just glue and nailing it to the box originally my plan was to make this trim match the rest of the trim in uh, in size but it just looked super bulky to me so I decided to cut them in half and I thought it looked a lot cleaner this way they don't go to the end of the box though because it clears the back of the saw Now to make the doors, this was a lot of trial and error. I just took this MDF sheet and I kept going back and forth from the miter saw to the band saw, uh, drawing where I need to cut out next, just playing around, seeing where it would interfere. Uh, the reason I wanted these removable is 99% of my cuts is just a, a straight cut, but whenever I wanna make a miter cut, I wanna be able to remove these doors. I never have ever made a bevel cut on my saw so I didn't even bother with that um, lastly I put the magnets on which I will replace these at some point they're just what I had on hand but they're way too big and you can see them and I, I don't like that so I got to change them the last thing I wanted to do for part one is add some t-tracks for what will be a stop block uh, I just used the uh, painter's tape and CA glue trick to put in these little fences so I could route against them and then I glued and screwed these T-tracks in plenty strong and I'll come up with a stop block at some point. I just, I wanted to get this done before I finish today. And that's gonna do it for this video. 
that's going to do it for part one of this build i wanted to split it up into two parts because if you wanted to you could just stop right here this is perfectly fine on its own but i am going to use it for a while see how i use it and i'm going to come up with some different things to do in part two for instance i want to put a door on that side i'm thinking drawers on this side i want to make some extra storage up here maybe up on top of the hood so i just want to use it for a while see how how it functions and come up with what i want to do so if you want to stay up to date on this project please subscribe and i'll see you guys on the next project